Oh, hi. Um, good morning and afternoon and evening. Um, um, I'm your host, Marathi Ali Shad, and uh, I welcome to my today's class, uh, which is our week two of our new series we started recently uh, about the subject and very important and deep subject of consciousness. And uh, what about, uh, what is this consciousness? So basically, uh, uh, before I, I go to, into my class, uh, I'm just informing and again, uh, letting you know that this is online lifelong um, study circle where we uh, meet with each other, we study and share and discuss important issues, uh, academic and practical issues, um, and uh, in form of classroom. And uh, we try to uh, leverage and increase the spectrum of our intelligence and also our spirituality from these things. Last week, uh, we had a first uh, week one, and that was uh, evolution of consciousness. Uh, and we did learn about basically uh, having doing and being idea. That what does it mean? If What things we have, how we do the things to make sure that we are a being as a human. Uh, I'm talking about in a human capacity. If you missed that class, so you can go to uh, my YouTube channel, there is a dedicated playlist for you as well. Uh, today class basically has a title, is very important, is very eye-opening uh, for um, that how human mind and human ego helps or uh, is, re is really sometimes unhelpful for um, leverage the spectrum of consciousness within the human domain. It is also important we will learn today about what the conscious level in small microorganisms like bacteria, virus, which are very, very tiny um, organisms, to plants, animals, birds, including reptile, um, and mostly kind of other birds. So, because remember, they all are part of our universe where we live. So, we need to understand how conscious, consciousness work with them as well. And then once we know them, how the consciousness work with birds, within uh, animals, including cats and dogs and stuff like that, then we are able to understand our human consciousness. You know what I mean? So that's why it's very important uh, to understand. And today we will learn uh, very eye-opening things um, and you will really enjoy. Uh, and uh, so, um, yeah. So, let me help you that uh, always remember that at the moment I am I'm live with you. You are listening to me, you are watching me. I can listen to you, I can watch you. You are on other part of the world. I am in some part of our world, our own planet, okay? But remember, we all are living here and our driving force, the first driving force is our survival. In somehow I'm talking with you because of my survival need. You are listening to me, you are watching me because of your survival need. You need some knowledge, you need some peace. Uh, that's why you are listening and you are watching me. I need to share with you, I need to talk with you because that is a uh, need of my survival on this planet i'm i i, I have a drink uh, i need to drink a water a uh, glass of water i food i sleep uh, I, uh, I like eat food and take sleep 
I have relationships. I have a lot of uh, uh, daily routines, evening routines and stuff like that. Everyone does have in the world. These are all uh, motion which we do for our survival. And that survival, that's driving mode of our life is backed by, is fueled by our ego. So basically our ego that push us all the time while we are sleeping, we are waking, we are talking, we are walking, we are uh, we're going in the toilet, we're going in the kitchen, we're going in the office, we are driving, we are uh, tracking, we are running, we are doing any activity is under that survival mode fueled by our ego. Now this human ego, okay, is lack of love is lack of consciousness, is very limited and give us pain, suffering, um, fear, fear from future, uh, bad experiences of the past in form of our memory, okay? And give a very, very limited uh, scope of happiness um, in a true sense. So that ego basically, which gives us survive, needs to be leveraged, needs to be increased, needs to be boosted to generate true happiness by reaching the climax of the love. And that climax of, of the love, we can only reach when we are consciously awakened, when we are enlightened when we are blessed, when we have a feeling of too blissful from the God or um, any deity which you belong to, which you believe on. So that is the theme of our next mode of life, which we all are lacking. Dr. David Hawking says 85% a uh, population of the planet Earth belongs to a survival mode. And 10 to 15 pe percent people, they somehow make effort to increase their survival uh, mode to the love mode, to the higher consciousness mode. And that's Dr. Hawking, uh, who is the author of today's uh, uh, reading, which I'm, I'm presenting you. And you can see on my uh, screen, uh, is saying that, uh, let me make a little reading more bigger. And if you see me here, um, okay, uh, this is a borderline. If you see my screen. Okay, the, this blue. And under these from uh, energy level from 20 to uh, 175 plus. That all 85% people we live and we have a very low conscious level uh, of most of the human being, okay? And that's we already know a lot of, and I have uh, repeated that thing many times in my class. My conscious level will give me permanent happiness or long-term um, joyfulness, or we call it in peace, when I will, I will start to live at least here. From 200 to 540, from courage, neutrality, willingness, acceptance, reason, and here is love. And that we are going to achieve. If we have a permanent feelings of these type of level or, or emotion uh, in which affirmation, trust, optimism, forgiveness, understanding, reversion, 
uh, river, uh, reverence. If these things, these emotions we have for permanent basis and the long term, then remember that we are so blessed and our consciousness is, is at height and is going towards climax until we become extremely super genius being um, like a uh, lot of prophets, uh, like Jesus Christ, like Buddha, and many other intellectual people and spiritual people are um, there. So, but I'm talking about on a general human, uh, human level at the moment. So that's why it is so important that we need to be very clear, must have a high degree of clarity where we are standing, where I am standing in my life, in overall picture of my life. And that overall picture of my life uh, will help me to leverage my scope of uh, conscious level. And it will uh, make my quality life, okay? So uh, that's why, uh, but always remember that we are uh, living with mostly uh, with ego. Our human ego is a fundamental uh, inheriting things which I have. And that is a starting point of our today's class. So we will start our uh, reading now. And I would ask uh, my, uh, my colleague and friend Jenny, she can start reading and then we can uh, go from here. Thank you. The evolution from survival to love. To understand the collaborated levels of consciousness, it is helpful to recapitulate the emergence of consciousness on the planet and its evolution through the animal kingdom into its expression as humankind. Our focus of interest here is the evolution of the ego with its innate limitations, which calls for compassionate understanding. The key point, the ego is not an enemy, it is our biological inheritance. Without it, nobody would be alive to lament its limitations. By understanding its origin and intrinsic importance to survival, the ego can be seen as being a great benefit, but prone to becoming unruly and causing emotional psychological and spiritual problems if not resolved or transcended yes thank you it's a great reading so we basically are helping ourselves through this class to transcend my ego to from survival to higher conscious level so that i must be a truly happy being okay that is the main thing which we are trying to understand. Now here we will try to understand our conscious level through animal consciousness, through birds consciousness, through the microorganism uh, consciousness. Like you familiar with the, you know, uh, bacteria, viruses, fungus, you know, these are very tiny organisms which only we can see hardly through powerful microscope, isn't it? They do have also consciousness. In fact, when this life on this planet Earth started, our consciousness started from these microorganisms. I mean, we know that the first uh, microorganism if you are a science student or you must have uh, studied or known uh, in your uh, primary science book that the first smallest organism is amoeba, uh, paramecium, bacteria. Uh, these are the smallest uh, uh, particles. Now, and millions years ago, billions years ago, when life came on our planet in any form, that these were the starting organism till today now. But they have been evolved and they have been transformed from bacteria, amoeba, paramecium, virus, fungus, 
then they turn into larger and bigger animals, organisms, and uh, uh, birds, and then human being. Okay, so our evolution, so they are origin and they are responsible for our, uh, as a person, we are living on this planet right now. So we need to know that how they used to work, how and what conscious level they used to have. So according to Dr. David Hawking, the smallest like bacteria, they that bacteria have a con had a and have a conscious level of energy one, two, three, four. Yeah. And I'm talking about the map of consciousness as compared to map of consciousness energy level. So which uh, it is on the screen from here. Uh, these are energy level. Uh, let me show you from um, red. So these are the energy level which I'm talking about. Okay. But uh, these are the energy level based on consciousness within human being. So our minimum and lowest energy of conscious is start from 20. But microorganism have starting point from energy level one. Okay, what does it mean? It's a very interesting point. It does mean that more lowest on conscious energy level we are, more stronger to respond to to uh, to survive on the planet more. We will be more reactive if we have a lowest energy level. We will be more feel threatened and more fearful if we have more energy level, uh, sorry, lowest energy level. And bacteria, organism, you know, whenever somebody is come, they attack immediately, immediately they attack. Lot of small insect like cockroach, like scorpions, they have lowest energy level of consciousness and they sting you immediately because for them, you are threatened to them, okay? And for their survival, they have to bite you. They have to sting you, okay? So they are more in feeling in a vulnerable mode and they cannot live without to kill you until they make sure that now you are not going to poke them. You are not going to touch or hit or kill them. That's why the lowest conscious level is so dangerous. And exactly the same lowest conscious level is we, uh, some human being also, or actually not some, mostly human beings we are. Especially, uh, uh, that unprivileged and deprived people of the, our societies, like poor people, uneducated people, backward background people, ignorant people, they are more vulnerable because they are rely, they are lie on a very low conscious level. And that's why they are involved in too much high rated crimes in the society, such as rape, such as gang rape, such as uh, killing, killing brut with brutality. Um, they love to, the serial killer. Uh, and, uh, and, and there are so many crimes, uh, hundreds of crime, and uh, they are because of on a very, very low level of human uh, being. And that's why exactly like a, um, like a other organism and other human uh, reptiles and other animals. So we basically are human being, right? But if our conscious level is low as equal to the conscious level of scorpion, then we will sting the other human like a scorpion. You know, we will kill the other human being like uh, bacteria kills the other, uh, other creature. We kill, we hit, we uh, uh, destroy others human being exactly because my 
movement of conscious level is exactly the level of reptile, like a snake when it sting, it bites someone, right? And kill someone. Exactly, I also kill some other human being because my conscious level is a snake conscious level. So that's how the conscious level um, is so important and so important to understand and because uh, it helps us to know who I am and where I'm standing right in uh, in middle of my life uh, phase, whatever I have, 70, 80, 90 years, what quality of life I, I am at the moment. So survival is the most important uh, to make us decision. But we need to come out from this survival mode. That is a bottom line. And that bottom line, and that's only we can, we can do when we uh, live in this uh, higher uh, conscious level. Okay. Otherwise, there will be no difference between anaconda and a human being. Otherwise, there is no difference between bacteria and a very, very fanatic terrorist. Otherwise, there is no difference between, um, between a reptile who eats their egg, okay? who do not have a, a conscious to uh, produce the ch children and offspring like snake. You know the snake, many snakes, when they lay eggs, they, uh, they don't care about the eggs. And many offsprings die without care of the mother snake because of too much low consciousness snake usually have. The same thing, we and uh, as a human being, all mothers and uh, all human mothers are not on the same level, okay? They, uh, they are not good towards all children. They don't rate all children same because they are not among those high conscious rated mother, uh, human mothers, right? Um, I see many parents, they, Hit, they they are very bad with their children, and many parents are very careful, very loving towards uh, their children. Right, so that why because of the conscious uh, calibration level what they have. Okay, this is the highest teaching which I am sharing with you, um, and we need to know. We need to understand what I'm talking about, okay? So let's go and read the same thing from Dr. Hawkins' book, okay? The Map of Higher Consciousness and uh, where uh, our higher consciousness is growing from billions of years till now. We still on the journey of awaking our higher consciousness, okay? So, uh, and that's it. And that's we are. This is extremely eye-opening thing for those people who are uh, truth seeker. Okay, so let's start our reading in this capacity. That when the life uh, arise um, uh, on this planet, then what happens? How the bacteria uh, ego from survival and it goes to further other animals, birds, reptiles, um, and, and other uh, human beings, you know. So let's, so I would ask Jenny, if you can continue to read it, please. How did life arise on the planet? From the unmanifest to the manifest, the energy of consciousness itself interacted with matter and as an expression of divinity, by that interaction, life arose. In its earliest forms, the animal expressions of life were very primitive and did not have an innate inner source of energy. Survival, therefore, depended on acquiring energy externally. This was not a problem in the plant kingdom, where chlorophyll automatically transformed solar energy into necessary chemical processes. Animal life had to acquire what was needed from its environment, and that principle of survival then established the main core of the ego, which is still primarily involved in self-interest, acquisition, conquering, and rivalry with other organisms for survival. 
Importantly, however, it also had the characteristics of curiosity, searching, and therefore learning. Thank you. It's a great reading. So you see that the human survival is much more sophisticated, but of course it is under ego. And that ego make human mind and human being like me and you more curious about the things. We always search about the different things. We always learn different things. And why we do learn, why we do search, why we do modify the things, why we add the new knowledges because of a new degree of survival we need. Every age we need a new degree of survival. And that's why we, our human mind is getting more complex than before. I mean, our human mind, which was, let's say, 5,000 years ago, was very simple, was very, um, what is called linear and straightforward thinking based than today. Okay. And why not? Because today, which type of environment we are living um, was never imagined a person who was five year, 5,000 years ago. We are extremely in the highest peak of development, in, but our conscious level, unfortunately, does not deserve to live in this high-tech um, high uh, society space, high-tech living style we have. Look at how we are interacting with you. You are sitting and, and listening and watching me on one part of the world. And I am thousands years away, thousands miles away from my uh, office. I am talking with you, right? Um, how did it, how did it possible? It had been a great evolution, which made it possible. But at the same time, it brought a lot of challenges, a lot of complexity, which I cannot solve, which I can I don't have time to solve them. Because I have very limited and very small life, 70 years, 60 years, 80 years, 90 years. I can do only few things in my life. And only those impactful things when I'm on a high peak of my conscious level. And usually the higher conscious level any person have after 40s of their life. Okay. Like I'm after 40s of my life. I feel that my conscious level is much more. Uh, what I used to have in 20 and 30s. And so that may be of you. Um, and more I will be learning and, uh, and searching and seeking that how I can leverage my conscious level, more it will grow. And more, and until it will grow like it, when I will be 80 or 90, I will die. I, will, I have to leave this, this, this planet, or this life. And because of, of my small area, uh, small span of time, my life uh, is with uh, me. So we, as a human, have a very small life. And that's why we need to feel uh, blessed if we are uh, able to increase our conscious level from survival mode to the love mode or higher conscious love. Like uh, uh, we have been involved, we have been evolved from a lower conscious species as well. Now it is important, remember, and what is this important thing? You know that many reptiles or reptilian uh, creation on this planet, they, uh, they are not good mother and father, okay? Um, like many reptiles, uh, like I mentioned before, they are very uh, careless about their children when they are giving birth. Uh, even through mammalians who conceive pregnancies or who uh, reptiles who lays egg, they are very careless. Okay, but those animals and reptiles and birds who care their children a lot than other, they are on higher conscious. For example, many birds, uh, mother, uh, when they lay eggs, mother bird always protects, always protect her eggs. 
and she um, she prepare uh, the protection plan for their in, uh, for their uh, for her eggs uh, in in any weather beautifully, unimaginably. Uh, I mean, we cannot imagine how a bird mother feed and bring the food from miles of journey to to her nest to feed the children, uh, the baby uh, birds, amazingly. I can't see, I, even a normal person cannot live without hearing that how that mother, um, uh, uh, mother uh, bird could do this, okay? And that exactly conscious level we human may have if I'm a mother, I'm a dad with higher consciousness, okay, I will protect, I will care my children and any other children a lot than compared to other mother and uh, human father and human mothers, you know. So on a conscious level, we all share and do the same things, okay. So that's why uh, we, on a conscious level, we all are equal, okay? The poor and lowest conscious level of scorpion and the poor and lowest conscious of human are same. Both stink, both bite, and both deceive other human or other species for their own survival, okay? So that's why the conscious level is such an important aspect of our life. You know what I mean? So uh, here are Dr. David Hawking, who is the author of the book, which we are reading. He does mention also that there is a Komodo dragon. You may be familiar of the Komodo dragon. He, scientists thinks he is the living dinosaur on this planet Earth. And this Komodo dragon, why uh, is calibrated at 40 uh, of their consciousness? Because that Komodo dragon, uh, whenever, uh, I mean, it bites or it hit to the prey to someone and feed himself or herself, that is sufficient for him for a while until that Komodo dragon wait for prey to die and then, then he or she eats. So it means that she does not or he does not uh, kill someone for sake of killing, but he or she kills someone uh, or stings someone or hit someone for sake of her survival and he does not kill immediately. So that is a, a indication that some human um, and some reptile and some uh, other beings, when they calibrate below 200 of conscious level, uh, according to Dr. David Hawkins' map of consciousness, they do what they need to do, okay? And uh, like I said, we human being also do even we human beings are more, much more worse um, and they, uh, we are more bad than other reptiles as well. Because in spite of having uh, a good level of consciousness, we still kill other. We still deceive and hit other, deceive other. We are a world of frauds. The fraud is happening everywhere in the world. Digital fraud, um, physical fraud, money fraud, deception, you know, forgery, uh, killing, stabbing, it's happening everywhere. Uh, firing, shooting, terrorist attacks. Why, what, where this comes from? Why this is happening? Because of we calibrate on lost a level of our human consciousness, which according to our map, we are living a shameful life, we have a guilt-based life, we are in grief, 
we have a fear, we have desire uh, to excel, to compete other, we have too much anger, and we feel some hope, somehow pride on our community, on our label, which, what I think I belongs to. So they are the very, very low poor social uh, uh, and political and geographical labels uh, we, we associate with ourselves for sake of our survival. And that is our uh, indication of poor uh, lifestyle we are in. So let's read it. And uh, well, let's see what we learn from the book. So I would ask Jenny if you can read it, please, for us. Calibration below 200. Life initially survived out of self-centeredness. The ego, which is the care of the survival drive, was merely doing what, the, what was necessary as life evolved from bacteria to insects to the emergence of reptiles and dinosaurs. The Komodo dragon with a collaboration of 40 is a living example of the dinosaur area, era. Its only intention is me and in order for me to survive, it is necessary to eat you. Indeed, some human beings calibrate at that same level and are run by that energy field and its patterns. The Komodo dragon has perfected the process. After just one bite, it settles down and waits for you to die, and then it enjoys a warm dinner. Its intention is not spiritually corrupt. It just intends to survive by eating you. Yes, thank you. And we, we have uh, thousands of uh, news in our media, of a newspaper, now in social media, that, <clears throat> that what brutal, brutality a uh, human being uh, now carries with them. I mean, family members, neighbors, People living in my town, they are not safe from, uh, from any other potentially killer or culprit or uh, criminals. They are hidden. They are open everywhere. And uh, we, we, we are scared of. If I'm a woman, mostly I could be scared because of being raped, because being of gang raped because being of uh, uh, looked down upon by other uh, vulnerable group of criminals. And gang rape is everywhere in, in, in every, in, uh, in mostly societies in the world. Why it is happening? Now we know that a lot of people who live in very poverty-based areas and they don't have food, uh, they, they do kill uh, other human beings and they eat it on a regular basis. Uh, the human body parts they eat, um, that's happening because of we are living on the same level of consciousness. And uh, that is our biggest threat now on our planet. Um, and now even if you see the uh, lowest level of a terrorist, a terrorist who have an agenda to kill, um, to kill hundreds of people by, by bomb blasting, and not only he kills himself uh, by suicide bombing, but what the level of terror he is successfully uh, put on the society where he is doing, and uh, what the poor and lowest conscious level that person will be who is doing a suicide bomber. Can you imagine the intensity, how we are, uh, um, we are drained by our positive energies and uh, there is no difference uh, is coming, uh, we can see between a Scorpio, between a reptile who bite or sting to other, uh, and we are doing the same thing, even we are more worse. The best thing is like, for example, if, uh, if snake is, is biting some other snake or other being, or let's say snake is biting to a chick, a chicken, okay, a small chicken, 
he is biting to eat because that snake wants to eat something to fulfill his hunger. And, uh, and that's okay as far as ecosystem. Uh, we know that this is a part of our ecosystem. So that snake will bite um, and will uh, swallow the whole chicken inside, okay? And feel um, filled tummy and uh, his or her hunger is okay now. And that's okay, acceptable. What about the human being? We even have enough food in my fridge. I have enough money to buy um, food for next couple of months in form of money in my bank balance. But I have a craving to earn more money, to fearful about my future food. And I'm worried about something is deficient after one year in my city, in my country, that worry is, is making us too much on a lowest conscious level. That's why we, it's a sign of alarm um, on a human base, which we are working, which we have such a poor, um, poor conscious level um, and we are frightened, you know, but, uh, but what our human mind has developed. Now, because we are human, okay, and we have developed our mind uh, as unlikely with other species, like my human mind is not like uh, giraffe human mind or zebra human mind, right? Now I have sophisticated and more complex human mind because I gather and I store a lot of information in my mind, I processed it. I do compare what I have information and uh, as compared to other human beings, I integrate my information and stories and my experience and my observation with my previous knowledge. You know, I can relate my knowledge, what I have, and I can a uh, lot of do other things. And that all uh, make me intelligent. So I have an intelligent mind, right? And that's okay. But that intelligent mind is still in surviving mode. All this process of my mental mechanism is still because of my fear, is still because of my low consciousness. Okay, I'll give you a quick example. What about the scientist or the doctor scientist or the researcher who is doing some, science, some research because of some fear? And that fear is for because of some survival of our human community, right? That doctor and that scientist who is designing or developing something is on a very low conscious level because if his, uh, he has a fear and depression uh, and have anxiety that our human being or our certain community is going to extinct because of something that all worries still make him a lower level of 200 uh, energy of unconscious level which is not desirable okay and uh, and the, the same thing is uh, about uh, the tiger if you see the tiger um, a lot of uh, mammalians, animals, they also uh, hit other, they also kill other, but for sake of food, they don't hit or they don't kill someone uh, if they don't feel hungry, okay? Uh, and that's acceptable, like I said earlier. But the good thing that a that, uh, lot of uh, what we call the birds and reptiles, and animals above 200, they are uh, on a very higher conscious level. And that is awesome. Um, and that is the thing which we need to observe and look for and follow them. And, uh, but before still under 200 conscious level, energy level, 
which we calibrate, we still uh, on a lowest level of consciousness. Yeah. For example, Dr. David Hawkins is saying, we as a human being have a negative attitude and very smartly deceptive nature of deceiving other human beings. You know, you know, we as a human being, we deceive other. If you see a lot of uh, criminal uh, based uh, movies, if you go on Netflix, you will find a lot of crime-based movies and series. And crime-based movies and series have a plot, a smart plot of doing that crime. How they deceive the other and how they kill other, how they hide facts after um, committing the crime is awesome. And that's the Hollywood uh, and Bollywood and other film industry, they are cash, cashing that fact that we human being, human mind is curious to know and see that crimes, how, how they happened. And we are making those moving more and more. We have dedicated thousands of movies uh, on, on the crimes. Now these crimes are also on a hum, on a uh, animal kingdom level as well. Like he's giving the example that how um, many animals and birds, they do deceive other, they have a rivalry with other uh, animals and other birds. They, uh, they do camouflage. Camouflage is a tool of, of deceiving other very smartly. And we human beings are much more smart than them. So we need to know where we are standing as a human being. Um, and if you see the image on my screen, one image is the pack of wolf. The wolf is, is such a brilliant animal, but at the same time, uh, wolf has a very um, bad or uh, negative habit to deceive his or her um, other person which he or she wants to kill other wolf. But wolf deceive the other wolf by smartly um, uh, in collaboration with other male uh, wolf as well. Uh, and and we do we as a human also do because the wolf uh, calibrate on 190 uh, level, where that wolf uh, have a, a shame or evil or guilt-based emotion on a conscious level I'm talking about. And uh, today we human do are, are, being, are doing as well. So I would, uh, uh, but on the other hand, if uh, we calibrating above 200, okay, then a um, lot of animals, birds, especially the grazing animals, uh, those animals who loves to eat grass, um, who are chirping, who, uh, who are mostly vegetarian, they are superb conscious based human being. And we need, we are, we love to each other. Uh, so that's why we are going, going in a, such a uh, human uh, dignity based uh, conscious level. So um, if you know that the cow, sheep, deer, elephants, horses, they all calibrate above 200. And we, uh, as a human being, we love to meet and live with them, right? Uh, can you uh, start to write here, uh, read it, and uh, then it's a last paragraph before we finish uh, our topic for today. So I would ask Jenny if you can read it, please. Calibration above 200. At consciousness level 200, there is a shift in the animal kingdom to the more benign, gentle, and kindly, that is, 
In addition to the carnivore, an animal that feeds on other animals, there emerges the herbivore, veggie. A significant transformation of consciousness was the appearance of grazing animals on the Great Plains of Africa and North America. At 200, the giraffe and zebra graze. They do not hunt and kill. The grazing animals not only return nitrogen-rich fertilizer to the soil and thereby sustain life, they spread seeds in their manure, thus, manure, thus supporting the propagation of vegetation. The deer, elk, cow, elephant, sheep, and horse calibrate over 200. Yeah, that's right. Uh, thank you for uh, reading this. So um, mostly domestic animals, they are superb conscious beasts. Um, and uh, we all love, we want to uh, live with them. We want to uh, grow um, them and, uh, and we, that's why we made farm, um, and that farm is for the welfare of animals and birds uh, because they are such a highest level of uh, consciousness. They don't kill. Like, I never see a wild giraffe. I never see a wild zebra. Um, but maybe, um, and never they killed any other because their consciousness is is not uh, on the basis of survival. Um, they may be die because of hunger, but they will not kill someone. Uh, the same thing with the human being. A lot of human beings, they, they prefer to be die rather to deceive someone. They prefer to uh, be on a bed of death uh, rather than to hit and kill and get and gain first uh, worldly gains. Uh, and so a lot of human, they have a also higher consciousness. They, they cannot hit someone. They cannot kill someone. They cannot say bad thing to someone. So that's how we do. Um, so, and uh, earlier I mentioned, there's a difference between um, higher level of consciousness and lower level of consciousness, such as the mother bird uh, who loves to feed and who loves to care uh, her young kids, uh, her young uh, birds in the nest, unlikely to some reptile uh, like such as crocodile or such as snakes. Um, when they lay eggs, they don't care about their children. Uh, because of our conscious level, so as like a human being on our planet Earth. So this is the last paragraph I would ask Jenny again you read, and we will finish for today's class. From consciousness level 200 up, the nature of life becomes more harmonious as maternal caring appears for the first time. Along with concern for others and the beginning of what is later expressed in human nature as relatedness, socializing, play, family and pair bonding, and group cooperation for shared goals, such as survival via community activities. In the mother bird, we see caring about her offspring. The reptile does not care about another. The mother reptile lays the eggs and wanders away. But in the mother bird, there is concern about the survival of the eggs and the little baby birds. With the evolution of mammalia life, we see the first appearance of real sustained concern for others in the form of maternal love. Thus, love first presented itself on the planet through the feminine, which expresses concern and caringness. Thank you. Yeah, it is a, a universal truth that uh, love first uh, presented itself on the planet through feminine. And that's why we all love uh, feminine. Um, we associate uh, this entire universe as her, as herself, uh, the herself who gives the birth to other. And there is a big, um, a big argument and big reason why uh, men are not superior to women because the women give birth to men. So women. Uh, must be bigger and superior 
in terms of spiritual uh, terms I'm talking about, than men. So the people who are gender biased and they have majestonistic behavior against women, they must think that who, uh, how they are born. Uh, so that is basically a lowest conscious level of, of a men as a gender against women uh, based on biased and prejudiced. Um, but the reality is something uh, that we all uh, are outcome of, uh, uh, and we all are offspring of our mother nature of our niche, our whole entire universe. And that's why in every society, in all, any moral grounds, uh, love and of love or about love of her is such an important. In India, uh, they call and their world, uh, their belief system is around motherland of India. So they think that the first Indian soil, uh, they give birth to all Indians. So, you know, they, that's why, right. but of course they are not right in a, on a broader way because they only associate thing that the Indian soil is pure and holy. Um, but of course it's not the matter. If we go beyond India, if we go beyond America, if we go beyond Australia or Midland, uh, Middle East, or even if we go ab abroad in, on a planet Earth, every place is precious. And if as far as they have a higher consciousness, that must be superior um, and that must be living. And they are surviving in a truly sense. Um, and that is the home take we can, uh, we can have now. Um, so that is a consciousness on some level. Today we learned from bird kingdom and animal kingdom uh, that how uh, their conscious level is directly linked with their survival, okay? And unfortunately, our human survival is also not very different than animal kingdom, unfortunately. And that's why we are going very down our societies our moral grounds are going down. Yeah? But next week, we are going to learn in detail that how human beings are surviving from lowest to the highest level of consciousness. So we will particularly dedicating, dedicate it, learn about human consciousness after reading this uh, bird and animal consciousness. I hope you enjoy uh, new things uh, which we uh, in a new dimension uh, I, I really enjoy it when I I learn and I observe and I contemplate that lowest level in human being uh, sorry in uh, reptiles and in uh, other creation and even in microorganism how it is linked with my consciousness you know so that's, it's a, it's a mind-blowing thing uh, for very serious people who are truth seeker, who wants to live a pure life. So thank you very much for your uh, time, uh, for your attention, for your energy. And uh, we will meet in a week three of the same series of uh, evolution and levels of consciousness in next week number three. Thank you so much for your participation. Thank you, Meritive. Hey, Thank don't you. forget I have to be out the next three weeks, okay? Yeah, yeah. I just want okay. to remind you. <laughs> I wish you all the best. Hmm? I wish you all the best. Okay, all right. Have a great week. Okay. Bye. Bye.